hello and welcome to our beauty lifestyle and fashion show i'm your host adese adoaka and these are the headlines i wrote hit songs for whiskey say scales prince harry sported at a celebrity tattoo parlor in new york city angelina jolie ends two-year legal battle against fbi over claims ex-husband brad pitt abused her in a private jet one piece inspired collection debuts at new york fashion week and Kylie Jenner models Balmain gown featuring her own face made out of hundreds of thousands of beads. And on our trending segment, popular singer Scales has claimed that he wrote a lot of hit songs for his colleague Whiskid during the days at Empire Mate Entertainment EME. Appearing on an interview, Scales revealed he has co-wrote some of the songs in Whiskey's debut album Superstar, including the bonus track Waste Party. He, however, admitted that Whiskey also wrote songs for him, including the hit Mukulu. Scales said, back in EME, we were a team, so we used to write songs for each other. I wrote songs for Whiskey. He also wrote songs for me, too. He wrote Mukulu for me, and I wrote his song, Whist Party. As I said, EME was a collective, so we did teamwork. Whiskey and Scales were among the first artists signed to EME by R&B star and music executive Banky W in the early 2010s. The record label brought the singers to the spotlight. They both later left the label after a series of disagreements with Banky W. In an interview with Ebuka Obi Uchendu a few years ago, Banky W revealed that Whiskey was owed EME three albums based on his initial contract with the label. Hmm. This whole label and artist Wahala all the time. I mean, it's in the past, it's been years since, you know, um, Scales and Whiskey left the EME. But now, Scales coming to come and tell us, oh, he wrote songs for Whiskey. I mean, people do that all the time. A lot of people sing songs and they are not, you know, um, the writers of those songs. So I don't think there's anything wrong in him writing songs, especially if they turn out to be hits. I know that feeling of, ah, I'm the one that wrote this song and now it's a hit. Like, everybody's rocking to it and this person is making millions of dollars, you know, for a particular song. It's a good feeling and, you know... I don't know the relationship between Skills and Whiskey right now. I don't know if they have a good relationship, but I mean, I don't know why he will come out to be telling us, oh, he wrote this and he wrote that. I mean, it's a normal thing. People write songs for people and they, you know, end up becoming hits and both of them just enjoy, you know, the benefits together. But I don't know, like I said, the relationship between Skills and Whiskey. So I don't know if Skills is enjoying, you know, the benefits of all the songs that he wrote for Whiskey back then. But it's also good to know that Whiskey also wrote songs for Scales as well. But I mean, it's a good thing. And I think it's normal, totally normal for anyone to write songs for anyone and they become hits. <laughs> and on our sports segment, while in New York City alone for a string of charity endeavors, Prince Harry was ported at a celebrity tattoo parlor in the city's Lower East Side. The Duke of Sussex dropped into East Side Inc., and spent about one hour inside, according to reports. It remains unclear whether Harry came out of the parlor with a tattoo or what kind of tattoo, if any, he opted for. Eastside Inc. is one of the city's oldest tattoo shops, which originally opened in 1992 when tattooing was still illegal, as claimed on their website. Staff, however, have remained tight-lipped about Harry's recent visit. Uh, I don't know. It's actually interesting to see, you know, a prince go to go and have a tattoo. I don't know if that is allowed, you know, for a crown and royal prince to have a tattoo on his body. But then we are even unsure if, you know, Harry had any tattoo at all. But for him to stay in there for one hour, that means he got a tattoo done. I don't know. What do you think Harry is going to have his tattoo done on his arm, his chest, his back? <laughs> I really don't know. But I'm sure with time we'll get to see if he actually had a tattoo and where. I mean, I'm really looking forward to it, but I don't know. Is that a thing for a prince to have a tattoo on his body? I guess we'll find out. And on our editorial segment, after a two-year battle, Angelina Jolie has dropped her lawsuit against the FBI over the Bureau's investigation into an alleged abuse incident that took place between her and her ex-husband Brad Pitt. The Tomb Raider star filed a motion to dismiss the case with prejudice on September 25, according to court documents obtained. Both parties will be liable for paying their own legal fees. The FBI launched an investigation into Pitt's alleged physical altercation involving Jolie and their children on a private jet in 2016 after an anonymous call was placed to the Bureau. 
this whole legal battle between Angelina and Brad since their divorce is just, I don't know, they keep dragging it. They are always, always in battle about one thing or the other. But now this one, I don't know why an anonymous person will call and, you know, report to the FBI about a case between a husband and wife unless that person was actually around to see that this thing actually happened. But then I don't know why Angelina is actually dropping this case. Is she coming in good terms with Brad? What is really happening? This couple, I don't, I don't know. Couples in Hollywood are just so funny. Like it's like they fight today, tomorrow they're reconciling. Next tomorrow you see them together. Then they come and divorce again. I don't know. It's just a lot of drama happening between couples in Hollywood. But then I just hope that you know cases like this don't always come up. And even if they do, they handle it amicably and at peace. Physical altercation is just you know something that nobody looks forward to having in a relationship with their partner. So, and then also knowing that the kids were there when this was happening, I don't know. It's just not a good, you know, thing for Brad. But I don't know the reason why Angelina would drop, you know, the case and against FBI and also against Brad in this case, but I don't know. But I just hope that it turns out to be a positive thing. And on our new collection, a collection inspired by One Piece hit the runway at New York Fashion Week earlier this month. Dim Mac, a lifestyle brand created by renowned DJ Steve Aoki, partnered with Teo Animation to create the collaboration for the series' 25th anniversary. Dim Mac and One Piece includes a variety of clothing and some accessories. Clothing pieces transform Ichiro's Order's One Piece world by incorporating themes and references from the series' recent Egghead arc. It strays away from the traditional anime clothing collaborations that only have graphic t-shirts. Instead, the D-Mac and One Piece collaboration is creative, pulling away from the limitations of traditional anime-inspired clothing. Welcome back. And on a spicy or not, Kylie Jenner is making the most of her trip to Paris Fashion Week, spending time with sister Kendall Jenner and hitting up various fashion shows. Though she did not attend the Balmain Catwalk presentation, the Kylie Cosmetics founder did shout out designer Olivier Rostang when she posed in a custom gown featuring her very own face. Kylie showed off the strapless dress on Instagram which featured her own sad profile with bright pink lipstick in a photorealistic portrait made from hundreds of thousands of beads. The ultra couture look was a personalized version of the style seen at the Balmain show which took place on Wednesday and featured models rocking long sleeved gowns with red lip faces in a similar design. I mean Balmain and Kylie always always a good combo all the time and you know kylie kylie when it comes to you know slaying it in fashion she's got it and then this whole paris fashion week i really love the fact that celebrities are going all out they are slaying it from rihanna to kylie to kendall to um other models and to also our baby girl aria star they are all killing it in paris and for this fashion shows i think they are really really creative when it comes to their looks and i really really love this one on kylie it is really creative it is different it's something that i haven't really seen on any celebrity and i love the fact that even though she wasn't there she still gave you know her shout out to olivier who is um the brain behind the brand and you know i think it's a good thing seeing balmain and kylie come together to create this look it's really different and lovely and don't forget to catch us up at spicy view underscore africa until the next episode, do have a lovely time. Bye.